Dear sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus, welcome to this homily on this 24th Sunday in Ordinary Time, Year B, and we reflect upon the Gospel passage from St. Mark's Gospel, chapter 8, verses 27 to 35. St. John begins his first letter like this, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, we have seen with our eyes, we have looked upon and touched with our hands, we testify to you and proclaim to you. First John chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. A deep personal experience of Jesus is a primary qualification of a true Christian. And this is what Jesus emphasizes in today's gospel. When he asks the disciples, who do you say that I am? And the disciples only partially passed the test. And hence, Jesus strictly charged them not to tell anyone about it. For I am sure they were not qualified yet to preach him. Let's come to the gospel passage. We are in the middle of St. Mark's gospel in chapter 8 of the 16 chapters, where Peter confesses Jesus to be the Messiah. From the very beginning of the gospel of Mark, Jesus insisted that his identity be kept secret. Especially he stopped the demons from revealing that he is the son of God. For example, 143, 312, 544, etc. This is what the Bible scholar is called the messianic secret. And we will come to that. But today Jesus asked the disciples to openly speak about his identity. Because Jesus, according to the Mark and narrative, is in a decisive moment. So far he was mostly in Galilee, but now in chapter 8 he begins to travel to Jerusalem. And we know what would happen to Jesus there. In St. Luke, the demarcation of this traveling section is very clear. In Mark also we can still see it from the use of the expression on the way many times, which will end with his entry into Jerusalem in chapter 11. The dilemma for Jesus Possibly was this, the opposition was gathering itself to strike and he was not sure if he had any success at all in his mission. Had anyone discovered who really he was, at least his disciples? It was clear that the people had not understood him as a Messiah, the Son of God. But this is what from the beginning, as St. Mark puts it, the world needed to know. St. Mark begins the gospel with these words, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Mark 1.1 1, 1. Though they witnessed many mighty miracles he performed, their eyes were only on what Jesus was able to provide. From the Old Testament, they should have known that it is God, Yahweh, who has power over waters and who could feed the people miraculously in the desert. But they did not. Even the disciples were not sure. After Jesus calmed the sea, they voiced it out, saying, Who is this man that even the wind and the sea obey him? Chapter 4, verse 41. And Jesus was surely concerned about it, as his time was running short, since he knew what awaited him in Jerusalem, crucifixion and death. Just before today's section, Jesus asked them openly, Do you still not understand? 8.21 Now he wanted to know for sure how much have they understood his identity. So as they were in the area of Caesarea Philippi, he asked them, Who do people say I am? And who do you say I am? And Peter rightly confessed to him to be the Messiah, the Christ. Jesus must have been relieved, at least they have understood him. And for the first time he accepts his identity confessed in public. But strangely, here too, Jesus insisted that they tell no one about it. What's happening? Why is it that Jesus does not permit even the disciples to make his identity known? Does he not want them to proclaim him as the Messiah? The answer was simple. Jesus was concerned that they might proclaim half-truths about him, proclaim him merely as a miracle worker, 
and possibly as a warrior or conqueror messiah, which Jesus was not. It is clear from the very next section. Even though Peter confessed him as the messiah, neither he nor the disciples had understood that he will be a suffering servant and hence wants him to be spared from the cross. He said, God forbid, let this cross never come to you. It is as if the disciples knew him, but did not know him. Saint Mark very cleverly presents this condition of the disciples by placing the miracle of the healing of the blind man of Bethsaida just before today's incident. Unlike all the other miracles, this blind man was not healed immediately, but step by step. Jesus pat and touched his eyes and asked him, Do you see? And the man said, I see men, but they are like trees walking. And when Jesus touched him again, he received full sight. This is clearly a way St. Mark indicates the slowness of the disciples in understanding who really Jesus was. Yes, they saw, but they did not see. They understood him, but they did not understand him. Peter said, you are the Messiah, the expected Savior, but a powerful one and not a suffering one. If Jesus had allowed them to proclaim him at that time, they would have preached a wrong Messiah who had come with power and who would lead an army and destroy the Roman rule. Yes, they would have spoken of men, but as walking trees. Remember, even after the resurrection, Jesus asked them to stay in town and not to go preaching until they were filled with the power from above, which was needed for a clear understanding of who Jesus is. This is what he had told them, the counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. John 14, 26. Once they were filled with the Spirit, Peter and the disciples, who would have preached Jesus as a victor, as a king in glory, and not as one on the cross, could say, like Paul, we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to the Jews and foolishness to the Gentiles. 1 Corinthians 1, 23. And they would say gladly, I decide to know nothing except Jesus Christ and him crucified. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 2. Yes, you cannot preach the truth about Jesus, about the gospel, unless and until you know him well. You experience him deeply. Be with him. Experience him. Know him. Unfortunately, there are so many around us today who feel they have had revelations and visions. And hence, they are the right and true preachers and authoritative shepherds and go on preaching prosperity gospels. Yes, a powerful Messiah without the cross, but which Jesus was not. This exile is what Jesus in the second part of today's gospel tries to teach them, saying, the Son of Man must suffer much and be rejected and be put to death. Jesus was very serious about it. The gospel says Jesus began to teach them, not just tell, didasko and not lego, the Greek term, about his suffering. And surely for the disciples it was hard. And Peter objected. St. Augustine says Jesus was victor and victim. And he was victor precisely because he was the victim. That's what many people don't understand. And this totally contradicted the idea of the disciples about the Messiah. And hence, they too objected. But the next question here is, why did the disciples fail to understand or accept when Jesus spoke of his suffering and death? The answer is simple. The picture of the Messiah, deep rooted in the minds of every Jew, was that of a mighty warrior. A great leader who would come with the power and strength of Elijah and defeat the enemies 
and establish the kingdom of Israel again, as in the days of King David. Prophets had time and again prophesied about such a great king, a Messiah. But the experience of the Jews for centuries was the opposite. The Assyrians, the Babylonians, the Persians, the Greeks, and finally, now the Romans were their rulers. So they believed that the promised Messiah would come one day with great power and would destroy all such powers and enemies. When they saw Jesus performing all the sorts of miracles, even demons and natural powers subject to him, and he was criticizing here the king, they were sure that this is the one they were expecting. Even they wanted to make him a king, as we know. But then, to their dismay, their utter disappointment, Jesus tells that he would be rejected, he would suffer and die. Jesus was so serious about this teaching about the cross that he calls Peter, who objected to this, Satan. Satan here only means a stumbling block, the opponent, not the devil. Just like Satan tried in the desert to tempt Jesus out of his mission, here Peter was trying to dissuade Jesus in accepting the cross. Satan was telling Jesus that he knew better what is the best for Jesus or what Jesus must do to save the world. And there was no need of all the sufferings. Look at Peter, possibly excited about the proclamation he made and happy about it, but he knew things now. And he's now in a position even to advise God. So he tells Jesus what and how things must go with him. Sometimes, dear sisters and brothers, we are in the same attitude in our prayers. We tell God what to do. We suggest to him what is best for us, and hence what he must grant us, those things we ask for. And often, they are about how to remove the crosses from our lives because crosses are bad evil. But Jesus wanted to tell them and us, God's power is revealed in weakness. That crosses, when accepted as God's will, will bring salvation to us and all around us. Hence the best prayer should not be advising God what he should give us, but for the courage to accept his will in our lives even if that means carrying the crosses. So dear sisters and brothers, we are all called to make Jesus known in the world. But before that, he would ask us, who do you say that I am? If you really know me, you may go ahead speaking about me, preaching me. Otherwise, don't tell anyone about it. You may misguide them and give false ideas about Jesus. For a blind man cannot lead the blind. May the Lord bless all of us so that we may know him and bear witness to him.